the, the concept that we're going to be working with is trying to solve trig functions. Kind of, and it looks a lot scarier than it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you four examples today. It's really the only way to, to learn this stuff. And the first two examples are a little bit easier and straightforward that develop the concepts. And then we push into some more challenging problems, all right? So um, all the directions for today are going to be the same. It's going to be solve the following on the interval from 0, less than or equal to theta, less than 2 pi. So the question is, why do you think they put you on that specific interval from 0 to 2 pi? Any thoughts on that? Why do I think they only want you to go from 0 to 2 pi? Think about the unit circle. That's just one revolution around, right? One revolution around the unit circle, right? So we can, get, we can technically keep going forever and ever, but we're going to go there. So let's, let's start by understanding what it is what we're reading when we look at this. It says, solve the equation cosine theta equals 1 half on the interval for theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. So what this is really asking us, this is asking us is for what... In, for what theta does cosine equal a half? Question mark. That's really what this is asking, right? What thetas from 0 to 2 pi, so we're looking for radians, does the cosine equal 1 half? And here's going to be our game plan, right? Our game plan is going to be to make a sketch, okay? So right now we're going to make a sketch for the cosine curve. So I'm using graph paper right now. Cosine goes up to 1. And it goes down to negative 1. And I'm going to go to 2 pi. Okay, there's 2 pi. So halfway between 0 and 2 pi would be what? Pi. would be positive pi. Halfway between 0 and pi would be what? Pi over 2. So here's pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. Now that's enough for the constraints, right? Because they just want us to go from 0 to 2 pi. But if I kept going, what would this one be over here? So 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2, very good, right? So this will be 5 pi over 2, and then what would this one be over here? 3 pi, right? So I can keep going. I mean, this doesn't stop. It keeps going, right? All right, let's draw a cosine curve. Cosine starts at 0. Pi over 2 is 1. Cosine of pi is 0. Oh, what am I doing? That's a sine, that's a sine curve. Thanks. Let's go back. 1, pi over 2, negative 1, 0. 1, if I kept going, what would be the cosine of 5 pi over 2? Zero. It'd be 0. What would the cosine of 3 pi be? Negative, Negative 1. Okay, so we have this, like, you know, nice-looking graph here, and it keeps on going, right? Okay, so there's our cosine curve, and we want to know from 0 to 2 pi when the cosine curve is equal to a half. So on y equals a half, I'm going to draw a line. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to clearly point out where the cosine is equal to a half. I can see two spots. I can see one right there. There's one of my answers. And look, there's the other answer. So all we got to do is figure out what angle makes this a true statement. And so the other cool thing about this is that it's broken up for you into quadrants. This represents quadrant one, doesn't it? This represents quadrant two. This represents quadrant 3, and of course we have quadrant 4. So the two answers that I'm looking for are going to show up in which two quadrants, everybody? 1 and 4, right? But also notice something, right? What about, what is this one over here? This one way over here. Yeah, quadrant, it'd be, it'd be a repeat back in quadrant 1, wouldn't it, right? So how many solutions are there to the equation cosine theta equals a half? No. There's an infinite amount of solutions. We only want the ones that occur in between 0 and 2 pi. But there are an infinite amount of solutions, okay? Excuse me? No, they're different angles, right? They're coterminal angles, but they are different, right? Okay. So here we say, uh, we say the cosine of theta is equal to a half when theta is equal to, okay, here's where you look on the unit circle, your bite size, and you ask yourself, look in quadrant one. Where in quadrant one is the cosine equal to a half? What angle are we looking at when theta is what? 60 degrees. So we keep it in radians, so that's pi over three, correct? And then where in quadrant four is the cosine equal to a half? Five pi over three, right? 5 pi over 3. 
These are the only ones that we need for right now, okay? But there's a piece, there's a little piece of this that has to be taught in, in conjunction with this. Since there are an infinite amount of solutions, right, and cosine has a period of what? What does the cosine have a period of? Every what? It repeats itself. Every, no? Oh, every 2 pi, right? So I could find the cosine theta as a half at pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. Now, this is where it gets a little strange, right? What does all this stuff mean? All this means is that at pi over 3, I have a solution, and it's right there, the one that I'm highlighting right now. But if I add 2 pi to pi over 3, I get this one way over here that I'm highlighting over there. That's just another multiple of 2 pi over, over, over or, or sorry, of pi over 3. So the k part represents integers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? In this case, we get our two solutions in between 0 and 2 pi without having to add on multiples of, of 2 pi. But in other cases, we're going to have to take advantage of that. So the answer is, to sum this all up, we say, therefore, cosine theta equals a half uh, when theta equals pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And it could be considered a solution set. So that is your answer right there. Okay, what do you guys think so far? Just a lot, a lot of information, a lot going on. You don't even know what to think? Yeah, okay. It's, I have no idea. It's just amazing. All right, let's do or do one more for a basic, uh, a basic one to get it all down. Okay, let's, let's try and solve the equation sine theta equals rad 2 over 2. Sine theta equals rad 2 over 2. As a side note, okay, the square root of 2 divided by 2 is what as a decimal? We're going to need this in a minute. No, no. As a decimal, there's no pi in there at all. Yeah, 0 0.707, right? So 0 0.7. We'll just consider that as a side note. We're going to need that. It's up on the wall too, yeah. Okay, so here we're going to do. We are going to, we're going to draw a sine curve, okay? 2, 2, 2, 2. I'm going to go out to 2 pi. I'm going to keep going just a little bit more. But I'm only obligated up to this point because the domain is restricted from 0 to 2 pi. Yes, you got it. There's pi, here's pi over 2, here's 3 pi over 2. Sine curve goes to 1 and negative 1, the, the range is from 1 to negative 1. Okay, if I kept going here, of course this would be 5 pi over 2, this would be 3 pi, and then it keeps going. So here we go, sine curve, right? It looks like this, starts at 0, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of pi is 0, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and the sine of 2 pi is 0, and I can keep going and have a good day, right? So, blah, 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 keep going forever and ever and ever. That part's easy. We're just graphing a sine curve. Then, what are we looking for? We want to know when that sine is equal to what? Rad 2 over 2, which is 0 0.707. 0 0.707 is about right there. I'm going to call that 0.7, which is my rad 2 over 2. You guys agree with me on that part? I'm going to draw a line. Oh, sweetness. Check it out. I see two solutions between 0 and 2 pi where the sine is equal to rad 2 over 2. You guys see that? So the cool thing is the picture tells you how many solutions you need or you're looking for, and it also tells you where they are. That is actually really stinking cool. So I'm going to look in quadrant 1, and I'm going to look in quadrant 2, huh? But what does this represent way over here, this little lonely one over here? That's a repeated one. That's a multiple of 2 pi. What about that one? Another repeated, right? So we have an infinite amount of these things. But we just want um, the ones that occur between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so our goal is to figure out where does that happen, where does that happen. If we could answer that question, we'll have answered the, the whole entire thing. You guys catching on? Okay, good. So please look in quadrant 1 and tell me where is... The sine of theta equal rad 2 over 2? Of course. Pi over 4. So that's one of your answers. It's right in the middle. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So how about this one? Well, what about in quadrant 2? What's your answer going to be? Yes, 3 pi over 4, right? Okay, so technically we would say this. We'd say sine theta is equal to rad 2 over 2. When theta is equal to pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And when theta is 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, we don't need to worry about those for this one. 
because that extra 2 pi k pushes us out of the boundary, so we don't need to worry about it. So therefore, our answers are pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, and that's our solution set. You starting to make a little more sense now? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, good. Let's try a little, something a little bit more interesting. Third idea here. Let's solve this. The tangent of theta over 2 is equal to the square root of 3. Ugh. Nasty. Wait till you see the last one. It's a doozy. Okay, tangent of theta over 2 is equal to the square root of 3. All right, I have no idea off the top of my brain what the, the graph of the tangent of theta over 2 looks like. So I'm going to consult Mr. Calculator. All right? So this is where the calculator comes in. We're taking the same approach. We're going to graph it, and we're going to figure out how many solutions we're looking for. Uh, the first two we can just graph by hand because that's just basic sine and cosine. But when they get all funky looking like this one and the next one, you go straight to the calculator. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode for graphing trig functions. Otherwise, it doesn't work properly. Okay, then we go to y equals. We're going to punch in the tangent of x divided by 2. Oh, sorry. Delete that. The, um, the, the x takes the place of theta when you're in radian mode. Okay? All right, now we want our scale, our window, appropriately. So we're going to go to the window. And we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi. 2 second pi. And we're going to keep our scale as pi over 2s. So second pi divided by 2. Now our y minimum, you have to remember, the tangent has a range of, of all real numbers, right? So we have to go down pretty far and up pretty far. But we want to figure out where the tangent is the square root of 3. Well, it turns out the square root of 3 is about you know 1.73. So I'm going to go down to negative 1 and only go up to 2. That will give me enough to see the, see the region. Then I'm going to hit graph. So your calculator should be doing something like this. Okay, It's only looking from 0 to 2 pi, and this is the tangent of pi over 2. Now, we want to go back to y equals, and we want to set this thing equal to what? What's on the right-hand side? No. Sega square root of 3. Exactly. So that's going to give us a horizontal line. So how many solutions are we looking for, you guys? We're only looking for one. We only have to worry about one solution. And it's going to end up being somewhere over, like, looks like quadrant 2. Huh? Yeah, well, here's what we're going to do, okay? Actually, so um, we know this. We can say the tangent of theta is equal to the square root of 3 when theta is equal to what? So where on the bite size, on the unit circle, is the tangent of theta equal to 60 degrees, right? When theta is equal to pi over 3. That's a 60 degree angle. But notice... We don't have a 60 degree angle. I mean, sorry, we don't have theta. What do we have? Theta. We have theta over 2, don't we? So we say theta over 2 is equal to pi over 3 plus pi k, where k is an element of the integers. Now, ooh, time out. Why did I only go pi k? Why not 2 pi k? Because it's tangent, right? And tangent has a different period. Tangent has a period of pi. Whereas sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi. All right? So when you're dealing with tangent functions, you've got to add on pi k. When you're dealing with sine and cosine functions, you've got to add on 2 pi k. All right, our goal is to solve for what? No, we're not, we're not rad 3. Our goal is to solve for theta. Yeah. So <laughs> solve for rad 3. So theta is equal to 2 uh, pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. All I did was multiply both sides by 2. Cancel that out. Multiply this whole thing by 2. Okay? Now, we don't have to worry about this part because it pushes us outside the window. So, therefore, the tangent of theta over 2 equals rad 3 when theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. You guys still with me? I don't even know. All right. So, this is gnarly. Sine of 3 pi. Theta plus pi over 18 equals 1. Do you have any idea what the graph of sine of 3 theta plus pi over 18 looks like? No, no not, neither do I. But the calculator does. Exactly. So let's ask the calculator. Hey, calculator, please graph this for me because I don't know what it is. Uh, where am I here? 
There we go. Clear this out, clear this out. Let's go back in here. We're gonna go sine three x plus parentheses pi divided by 18, close parentheses, close parentheses. Now keep in mind, our window is already set up. We're on the scale from zero to two pi by multiples of pi over two. We're already set up with our window. So all we gotta do is push graph. Look at that. Oh, okay, so some kind of a sine function there. Beautiful, right? What do we want this to equal? One. So we go back to y equals, and we put on the second line, y equals one. And we hit graph. Ooh. How many solutions are we looking for? Three. Very good. We're looking for three solutions. There's one in the first quadrant, one in the second quadrant, and looks like one close to the fourth quadrant. Or third. Whatever. You guys with me? Okay, so now all we got to do is go back and get them. So we know that we're looking for three solutions. Woohoo! Good news. Cool. That's what the calculator told us. We're looking for three solutions. How do we get them? Well, you ask yourself this. Go back and say, okay, when is the sine of theta equal to 1? Yeah. This happens when theta is equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, right? I know the sine will be 90 degrees when theta is equal to pi over 2 and every multiple of pi over 2 past that. Okay, so, but we don't have theta. What do we have? We have all this stuff, okay? So we set all of that stuff, 3 theta plus pi over 18 equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And we start going for it. And what's our goal? Find the theta. So algebraically, here's some algebra skills. So 3 theta equals pi over 2 minus pi over 18 plus 2 pi k. All I did was I moved pi over 18 to the other side. You guys still hanging on? Okay. So I'm going to simplify and get uh, 3 theta is equal to, let's call this, um, how about 9 over 9? Did I get my common denominator there? Yeah. Yeah, okay, nothing special there. Fancy 1. <laughs> so what's 9 pi over 18 minus 1 pi over 18? Pi over oh, there you go. Now we're thinking. 8 pi over 18 plus 2 pi k. So 3 theta equals, this is 4 pi over 9, right, plus 2 pi k. I did a little extra simplification there for a reason. Now I'm going to divide by 3. You guys are on the right track. Divide by 3. Divide this thing by 3. Divide this thing by 3. Everything divide by 3. So my theta is now equal to 4 pi over 27 plus 2 pi thirds times k. All right. All right. So far, so good. This right here. That's one of my answers, 4 pi over 27. Good, I'm going to write that back over here. So my answers are going to be, theta is going to be, I'm in my solution set, 4 pi over 27. But how many am I looking for total, you guys? So I need another one and another one. How do I get this one? How do I get that one? Add multiples of 2 pi. Okay, you got it. Okay, you're with me. I love it. Whoa, what happened? I lost you there. Okay. So this right here, this is when k is equal to 0, right? When k is equal to 0, the only thing I have is 4 pi over 27. What happens now if k is equal to 1? Uh, we get 4 pi over 27 plus 2 pi over 3, right? Because k is equal to 1. So let's, what's my fancy 1, you guys? 9 over 9, right? So 4 pi plus 18 pi over 27 is how much? 22 pi. 22 pi over 27. Hey, we got another one. Go back up here. 22 pi over 27. Uh-oh, we need another one. One more. So we're going to let k equal what? You see how easy this is? k is equal to 2. So that's going to give me 4 pi over 27 plus uh. 4 pi over 3, is that right? Yeah, 4 pi over 3. Gnarly, huh? 
So a nine over nine? Because because K is two. I know, because I only got six minutes left. So four pi over 27 plus, is that 36 pi? Or 27 equals how much? 40 pi over 27. Okay, there's my last one. 40 pi over 27. Woohoo! You guys rock.